I'm Flip Pallet, born uh, in Dade County, Florida, and just by the great accident of when and where I was born, I was able to grow up in, a, in an area that was probably the absolute perfect amphibious environment for a young boy to grow up in anywhere in the world and grew up at a time when light tackle fishing was just really being born and the place that it was being born was in Dade County and in the Florida Keys and I grew up with with a group of, of young fellows who shared a like interest with me in the in the water particularly in the salt water but not exclusively in the salt water because we all lived hard on the edge of the Florida Everglades which was sweet water so we fished both there and um, along the shores of Biscayne Bay which was a wild place in those times this would have been the 50s uh, and the 60s when things were just sort of getting kicked off and the catalyst to the growth of that activity um, at least in my memory was the the existence of local fishing clubs and these clubs were populated by other people like myself uh, and there must have been maybe half a dozen different clubs uh, maybe slightly less than that but the clubs themselves revolved around internal competition within the clubs people competing for the biggest fish in different tackle categories and all of those different competitions in the different clubs gave rise to incredible innovations not only uh, because of the competition but because the field itself was so new that there was room for all this innovation I mean nothing had been innovated up up until uh, the early the early 60s is really when it started booming and that of course in, included my greatest love which always was fly fishing it was always a mysterious aspect of fishing there was nobody around South Florida to give us any information about fly fishing whatsoever and those few people who knew anything about casting or about the tackle or about making flies uh, really were bad about cloistering the information and I remember that in 1959 Chico Fernandez came from from Cuba immigrated from Cuba with his family and I met Chico the day he got here just the very day that he got here and found out that he had been interested in fly fishing in Cuba had actually done fly fishing in Cuba and he was pleased to meet someone here who was interested in fly fishing and so we became fast friends uh, I introduced him to my little group of friends which really basically consisted of uh, Norman Duncan and uh, uh, a fellow named John Emery and another fellow named John Samuels and John Emery had been in my first grade class and we were in school together always all through college and Chico just sort of fit right in with the rest of us he spoke English very very well uh, was extremely bright but the best part of Chico was that he was hysterically funny I mean one of the funniest people that I've ever known and from 1959 to today this is 2007 Chico is still one of the best friends I've ever had in my life uh, and some of the other guys I don't see anymore some of them have passed away but but Chico and I are still in touch with each other weekly uh, and there have been some incredible parallels in our lives uh, Chico when we graduated from college became the first budget director for a new company that was just starting in South Florida which was Burger King and Chico was their first budget director 
I went to work in a commercial bank at the same time. And so we were both in finance. And then as years passed, Chico married a, a flight attendant. Uh, I married a flight attendant. Uh, we both quit finance at one point or another and made our lives in the world that we really knew and loved, uh, which was fishing. And both of us, because of when and where we were at the time, back there in the 60s, the early 60s, late 50s, early 60s, both of us got to watch particularly fly fishing, saltwater fly fishing, grow from, from infancy to what is now one of the great pastimes of this country. Not only a pastime, but almost a lifestyle. While I was involved uh, in banking and had a pretty good amount of time uh, that I could be away from my banking chores, I met a bunch of people who were in the uh, infant outdoor film business, particularly the guys who were involved with a series that some of you may remember called the ABC American Sportsman Series. And I was able to become friendly with some of those people, actually work on some of those shows with some of those people uh, who were introduced to me by another good friend, Stu Apt. Um, and uh, Stu actually got me involved in the production of a couple of different films with the American Sportsman and a series that succeeded it called uh, Outdoor Life. And ultimately, I was able to persuade some of the production people involved in those films to do a television series that really didn't involve any uh, actors or sports personalities, but which featured real anglers and real relationships between anglers uh, in a very, very lyrical setting. And they thought, well, that might work. And so we got together and actually did a pilot. And um, basically we had no money, so we sought uh, a financial partner and uh, that partner turned out to be the people who owned an island in the Bahamas called Walker's Cay, quite a famous fishing destination. There was a very nice hotel there and wonderful marina. And uh, they became the financial partners in a show which we named to try to draw attention to Walker's Cay. And the show name became the Walker's Cay Chronicles which everyone thought might last a couple of years because that seemed to be the average lifespan of a television series. Uh, as it turned out, I was involved in the filming of that series for 16 seasons, uh, during which time it was a, it was a very, very highly rated uh, television show for many years. It was the highest rated uh, television show on, outdoor show on, on cable uh, networks. And in the process of making those films, I was so fortunate to be able to travel virtually all over the world and see fishing destinations that I had read about, dreamed about, talked about with my friends, but never really had any reasonable expectation that I would ever be able to visit. Um, but all those dreams came true. Uh, and I did get to visit and fish in all those locations over a span of 16 years, after which I came to the realization that in spite of the exciting travel and the wonderful fishing destinations, no matter how good they were, the place that I really loved the best and enjoyed fishing the most was the place that I actually grew up, and that was the Florida Keys and the brackish water Everglades. In spite of, of all the wonderful things that I've seen around the world in fishing venues, the Florida Keys and the Everglades miraculously, and in spite of development all around them, um, has remained, in my view, the finest fishing destination in the world. And I get to enjoy all of that plus be in touch with my roots at the same time as I fish here.